Okay, on to the next one here. So this one's going to be a bit more challenging. We have a tiger now here with lots of hairs and details that we're then going to use a layer mask to place him on top of this jungle scene here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get this image onto the other one. So you can go up to file and place in bed or you can you could un unlock that background layer and then select your move tool. And we can just click and drag and place this right right on top. So that's a bit of a larger image here. So we'll command T to resize this thing. And let's get it about the same size. Let's use the border of the other image there. That would be the, the left and the bottom side here. Okay, so there we go. So we have this image now, and the first thing we need to do is we need to get a nice selection of the tiger here. Now this, we'll go through this together, but this will take some time because there's a few different things and um, kind of tricks that I want to show you here. So the first thing, now you don't necessarily, I'm just noticing that there's a lot of fine detail here that if we want to make things a bit easier for Photoshop to detect where all that contrast is, um, one, one thing you can do, and this is just kind of a little trick that I've used sometimes, is you can come down to your layers here and go ahead and let's add, come up to levels here. Now we haven't, you know, this we, we kind of went through this when we were talking about value, but let's do a levels adjustment here and let's kind of come down. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to make more contrast visible. So I'm going to, I'm going to change things around here a little bit until, until all those fine, all these fine hairs are just, are just popping out a little bit more. Right. Right. And we can see all the, all that, all the line around him, right? We can see those, we can see those things a bit better now. So let's do that. And then now let's go to our quick selection tool. And now let's try to get, oh, let's try to get at least kind of the rough, the rough selection here. It's a little bit hard to see. So remember in this image here, you can cue you know, just to quickly kind of see where you are, but don't worry about all the fine hairs just yet. Let's just get his body and we'll come, we'll get back to these whiskers, but we can see that had I not, you know, used this little contrast technique, I mean, it may have gotten some of that stuff, but we can see it's already, it's done kind of a good job, you know, picking out at least some of that stuff. But let's, um, let's continue with our selection and get him. So remember Q, okay, yeah, so I still got, let me get all of his body. Okay, we're getting there. I should have just made my brush a little bit bigger here, but okay. So let's see what that looks like. Q, okay, I'm still missing some stuff here. And they picked up a little bit here, so I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller and hold Option. some of that back. So I'm holding shift here and I'm coming up this edge. Yeah, so all of this stuff right here I didn't get. So I'm gonna hold shift. And again, this, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, we'll take this into select and mask and refine it even further. So this looks pretty good. A little bit there I could get. So maybe a little bit here I can get. But all these fine whiskers here, this is, this is the stuff that we want to get to make this more seamless and to integrate better. So once we've kind of gotten our, our somewhat good selection, let's do a couple of different things here. So let me hit Q one more time. Let me look around. Okay, so we can see I'm missing some of these, some of these whiskers have not been picked up here as I press Q. 
So here's where I would make the switch to the magic wand tool. And up here at the top, notice again, so we have our new selection, add to selection or subtract, same thing as the shifter option. So we have this selection from the magic wand tool, but we can now add to it using a different tool, using the magic wand tool. We can now, we can add to this. So I'm gonna use the magic wand tool to select some of these colors in here. And you might just be prepared to hit Command Z and undo a couple of times because it could, you know, we might get way too much than we want. But let's turn contiguous off if it's not already because we want this to pick up all the pixels and not just what's touching. And 60 tolerance, okay, we'll just try that. See how that goes. And let's see here. Let's add to our selection and I'm gonna, so notice I clicked right here just cause I'm, I don't wanna be holding shift for this. I'm just doing it differently. So I'm gonna click like, I don't know, right there. Okay, right there. So we can see it's, okay, so. Too much here, so if I, if I hit Q and I kind of look at that there, it's a bit too much. So I'm going to Command Z, Oop. get rid of that selection, and let's come in and I'm going to, my tolerance might have been too high, let me set this to 50 maybe, and I'm just going to click, Oop. here you'll have to, Oop, too much. You might have to just play around a little bit, kind of find the, the nice sweet spot there. So if I hit Q, that looks pretty, pretty good. Still missing some, some little stuff. So I'll, you know, I'll just kind of click around. And again, if you, if you get too much, you can just Command Z. So there's Q again. Too much. And again, I mean, you know, you could spend hours doing this, but we, you know, we're gonna, for the purpose of the exercise, I'll, maybe I'll just kind of move along here. So if I hit Q, again, I can kind of check and see I'm missing some of this stuff in here. Now, as I zoom out, because I'm using the magic wand tool, it's picking up some of this other stuff around here. Right, and that's stuff that we don't want. So we can get rid of this, right, a couple of different ways. So we could, you know, come back to our quick selection tool and hold option and click. Only thing is, is if I get too close to the tiger, it may think that I'm trying to remove some of my selection of the tiger. So I'm gonna just get close, but not too close. Okay. And then for big stuff like this, I mean, this is, I mean, just to show you, but you could also use your uh, lasso tool. And right now I'm on minus from the selection, but here, remember, you can add or subtract. So just make sure you're on minus and you could just manually draw a line around all of this and let go. And then that would take that all out. So that's, I mean, that's just one way you could go about doing it. But I see some things in here I'm going to, I'm going to come back to my quick selection tool and kind of take away some of this stuff here. So I'm not, I'm going to just stop right there with my, oh, let me get rid of that. Oop. Get rid of that and get rid of that. So let's just say this is perfect. Obviously you guys are going to be doing this better than I am, or at least I hope you spend a little bit more time getting this down. But I would say this is pretty good. I mean, getting these whiskers is gonna look really nice and, and seamless in our other image. So one thing I haven't gone over yet is, you know, you spend all this time on these selections, you know, really trying to get things down perfect. And um, what we can do is we can save these. So let's go up to select and you can save your selection now. And we'll just call this tiger. Okay, so that if I do command D or if I want to get rid of it or if I ever want to bring it back, I can always just come back up to select and load the selection and then select it here from channel. So tiger and hit okay. 
The reason why this is beneficial is because remember we adjusted our levels, right? We screwed this image all up trying to make that contrast pop. So now what we can do is um, we can delete that. Oops, delete. Or right click and delete layer. Yes. So that gets that adjustment layer is gone, and now I have that nice selection here. But again, I could always I could have taken that back or brought it back just by loading and saving the selection there. Okay. So now we have our nice selection. Let's go ahead and um, let's go a little bit further though. I mean, we did this manually, and we could have done a lot in this in Select and Mask. But let's let's come back into Select and Mask, and you know, depending on the backgrounds on both on these images, right? Onion skin may or may not be ideal, right? It's kind of difficult to tell the edge between the tiger and the jungle. So here's where I think overlay could be beneficial. That red and the green make for a nice contrast. But again, you could select on black or on white. But I'm going to keep using this red overlay one. That one is working out pretty nicely for me. So here we'll zoom in. And here we can play around with our selection a bit more. Right? You know, we should be getting somewhat accustomed to this now. So we can see that when I take this radius up, I start to lose, I start to lose some of these hairs. So I don't, I don't really want to do that. But with the global refinements here, maybe we can make things a bit softer. Right? Maybe we can feather a little bit, and you know, you'll have to play around with these, you know, just to see kind of what your selection is looking like. And then remember, shift edge to the left is going to make my bring my selection in smaller. We can see those whiskers retreating. And as I move to the right, you know, it's going to open up my selection a bit more and include more in there. But I would say, you know, get this, get this the way that you'd like. And then the nice thing here is again, so on the last video, I had you keep it to selection, but on our output, right, we can do a bunch of different things. We can put it to a new layer, which I think I've done that with you before. Um, a new layer with layer mask, right? That's that's helpful as well. But we're just going to do layer mask, right? And go ahead and hit OK. And then when I hit OK, the background will be gone, and we just have the tiger, right? Now, remember, what's white is being revealed and what's black is being hidden. So I could come into the tiger and I could hit Option, Click, and that's going to bring me this black and white version and show me exactly what's being picked up. You can see I've got a little bit of stuff right here that in the in the option click again. You can't even tell here because of the color, but if you are trying to get near perfect results, we could come back to our brush tool, make sure that we're on black, right? And we could just simply paint in these white spots, right? Okay, so I'm going to option click here. Okay, so not too bad. And, you know, it looks, you know, I mean, we could work on the edge a bit more. But he looks okay. And again, if I have my properties here on my layer mask, I can, right, I can bring that original background back through by lowering the density and then feathering the selection, which I kind of think I want to do a little bit because he's got a little bit of that, a little bit of this white halo around some of these whiskers. So we're going we're gonna to soften some of that up. Right. And again, the other ones that I've showed you here, we could go back into Select and Mask, and then Invert would take him away, but reveal the background. So let's get this, let's work on this tiger. And you'll, you'll save this as another weekly exercise and upload this to me so I can see your, your layers. And then one, so another cool thing, I mean, again, if I want to just remember, if I want to just make an adjustment on the tiger, right, I need to bring that selection back, right, and that's command click. That will bring that selection back. And then here I could, again, I could go into adjustments and I could... I could play around with the brightness or the contrast, exposure. Um, and let's just say, I'm going to delete this, but let's just say I wanted to, I don't know, let's say I wanted to 
make a new selection here. Let's say I wanted to let's say I wanted to intensify his eyes, right? I could come in here and I could I could make the selection on the eye and then I'm going to shift and add to this selection here. All right. I mean, we're going to get into colorizations and photo manipulations a little bit later, but just for the this, I don't know, his eyes just seemed really striking, but I could make a selection there and then now I could come to adjustments and uh, I don't know, I could go to channel mixer and I could now, I could play around with the channels and you can see that only his eyes are selected. Right? So if I wanted to just do something crazy, all right, I could... I could play with these levels and right and it's just his eyes that are changing there. So that's one way that you can, you know, play with layer masks and isolate and isolate things as well. Um, you don't have to change the eyes, but just uh so work on this and get this, you know, try to get this layer mask as clean and as integrated as you can. And um yep, yeah, send this to me as a Photoshop file so I can look at your layer and and kind of take a look at your you know, I'll come in and I'll look at your selections and remember craftsmanship is important. So take your time and try to get the selection as nice as you can. And there's one more layer mask exercise that I actually won't have the video for you. That's going to be on you to see how well you do without my step-by-step -step instruction. So there's three of these total. There's the gentleman on the backdrop, the tiger, and then the car on the street. And you'll see that as you as you finish this and get into the next one. Okay.